Hello, good morning to all. Myself, Mahin Sa from Parul Polytechnic Institute. Today, we have to meet four webinar sessions on referee knowledge about PLC. Our webinar agenda is some basics of PLC, like what is PLC, history of PLC, what, what kind of language used in PLC, sample logic, how to develop in PLC, live demonstration, and also how demonstrate an example in software. Today our guest expert is Mr. Kiran sir. He is a senior faculty of Rymac Academic Private Limited. So I request to sir please join and share your grateful knowledge with us. Yes sir. Thank you. Thank you man. Uh, yeah. Good morning everyone. Uh, let me just share my screen. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we are going to focus on very basic concepts. Uh, I hope uh, you might be aware of the word, P word PLC and about the automation. Uh, and uh, hope I would be able to add some new information, some new knowledge to your uh, to uh, to you, and also apart some new skills apart from just the basic knowledge. I am also going to see some examples and uh, some of them are very uh, helpful, maybe helpful for you. So let's start with this. Uh, in this presentation, we are also going to cover some of the basic concepts and uh, how about PLC uh, works and uh, what are the fundamental things to be known before you start, to start work with the PLC. Uh, yeah. Uh, as we are in this field since more than 25 years, so we have a good experience of working with this automation we are not only providing trainings uh, we are also conducting projects we are also had many our valued customers like Getars, apollo tires even sun pharma pharmaceutical industries amul uh, and even uh, more than larger clients we have today and uh, we are not only providing trainings to them we are also providing solutions not only for the automation point of view but we are also in the panel manufacturing so this is our wide experience and today my uh, i am presenting in front of you my name is kiran and this is my number and training id at the last that would might be helpful for you at the end of the presentation you may find it more helpful so let us begin uh, with it so today uh, we are going to cover some of the basic concepts like uh, what do you mean by the term PLC, what are the applications, where do we find uh, the PLC to be used, what are the architecture, what is the PLC basic architecture, we can understand what PLC means from there, and about the scan cycle and scan patterns, so you would be able to understand how PLC works internally, programming languages, not through deep, uh, not uh, very deep into that. I will just uh, give you the basic name terminologies, the IEC standards, which are uh, not only helpful for you from the point of view of understanding the PLC languages, but also knowing them uh, for a basic uh, uh, methodology, just for knowing uh, the names of languages. Ladder languages, we are going to uh, see in depth, more about in depth about ladder language which is the most common language uh, whenever you are going to learn PLC, whenever you start uh, learning PLC. We are going to see some PLC programming and we are also hoping to see one of the most, uh, what I, I'm going to focus at then, the career and the scope in this field of automation. What do you think? Is it automation for you or not? What should I opt or should I opt out of it? So let's see certain questions would be answered at the end of the webinar. And also we are going to learn some new webinar courses uh, in the series called the Industry Automation Foundation Courses, which are specifically to those uh, who are very much new to this field and uh, want to learn uh, new information. Also, what they want to know about what automation is and how to work and how to start uh, with the automation field. And I hope no doubt you would define uh, us as to be more important uh, in this field, helping you to come up with the new skills and uh, uh, the practical exposure to this field. Let's start. Today, uh, this would be my flow. So we are going to start with our uh, definitions, then applications, and history, architecture, scan, capabilities and advantages, languages, sample and software. About Hammock Academy, scope, opportunities, and at the end, uh, we are introducing a new certificate course. So that is what our Yeah. Uh, so now this is a very basic term. Uh, I hope most of you might be aware 
of uh, what PLC is to a certain extent. Uh, but to an, uh, if you go by a definition, uh, what PLC means to an uh, extent, here there are certain uh, standards, specifically NEMA is uh, one of them. Uh, NEMA is nothing but a National uh, Electrical Manufacturer Association. It is one of the largest trade association of electrical equipment manufacturers uh, in the United States. And uh, it's defi it defines PLC as, uh, if you go by word in this slide, uh, digitally operating electronic apparatus, which uses a programmable memory for internal storage of instruction by implementing specific functions such as logic, sequencing, timing, counting, and arithmetic to control through digital or analog input output module various types of machines or process. What does this mean? All this uh, uh, definition is means that. The PLC is nothing but a small uh, kind of industrial computer. You can think of a computer. What computer does? It computes. It does the job just like our brain does the job with us. So we can uh, use with the help of PLC. We can perform many various applications just like automating a system. That means there need a, there is a need of a calculation, arithmetic calculations, timers, counters. There might be a need of some sequencers, sequential logics, a way of programming to them. There might be some a way of how the controller works. So these all things are included in this word term called PLC. So you can just understand from in one word, PLC is nothing, but it's an industrial computer. And uh, if you go by a word, what is the benefit of using PLC? The very second point in my slide suggests that uh, if you go uh, by PLC using PLC, it's ability to change and replicate the operation or the process while collecting and communicating modern information. What does it mean? Uh, whatever the process you assume, uh, for example, it might be a process of filling. Uh, there is certain juice in a uh, tank and you're filling automatically that wall is controlled with the help of PLC based on the position of a container. It automatically that uh, wall walls open and uh, the container is filled and again it is transported ahead. So you can just imagine there is a certain process uh, we can un uh, get the steps out of it and then writing that steps in terms of logic in the PLC. So that helps us to actually we can whatever the physical situation you're reading, you're uh, seeing, you can just actually write in terms of logic in the PLC. And that is what the best uh, advantage of writing logic in PLC. And that is the only way you can uh, actually uh, create any easiest way, easiest way, I would say to imp that create a logic and write it in the, my PLC and uh, create a system, automatic system as you wish. Uh, apart from that, if you uh, go in a broader sense, what we can do with the help of PLC, just uh, by a sentence, if you want to know, you can just say with the help of PLC, you can enhance plan process or uh, production line or machine working in efficient and effective manner. That is the most important thing why the industries are using now this PLC because they want their machine to work in efficient and effective manner. In broader sense, if you go in categorization, yes, uh, apart from definition of PLC, there are wide categorization of PLC. It might be based on uh, our types of output. It might be based on types of size uh, and it might be based on the type of application. It might be some safety application and all those things. I'm not going in detail in this uh, presentation about them. Uh, I'm not interested right now in that term, but uh, there are certain uh, types of PLC you can go uh, by definition or you can just search on the internet and get uh, more about it. Uh, yeah. So we'll head to the next, uh, yeah, in this case, you can see here where PLC is used, uh, where PLC is used. What are the applications? Uh, specifically, if I go with this uh, dairy application, you can see in various dairy applications like milk processing, uh, not only from processing to the manufacturing, to the handling and such kind of various processes has been taken care of and they are managed by using PLC. So PLC becomes the core heart and we can call it as the brain of the whole system. And that is why it is important in the dairy industries nowadays. Even in automobile industries, you might have seen uh, most of the uh, factory uh, videos uh, in National, National Geography and various uh, YouTube sources uh, from there. You might have come to know about how this uh, new automobile plants are completely automated. Robots are working. They are actually uh, taking all the assembling, they are manufacturing, even in their manufacturing sectors, even they are in, a, a, I would say, 
uh, welding and in various sectors of uh, this automobile industry, even painting and all those things. So you might have seen those kind of videos. So that is what automation does that because uh, all the robots are functional just because of the PLC is integrated in them. It is made functional then robotics and automation are right now are integrated. Uh, they are actually in an integrated field. That's why industrial uh, robotics, uh, that's uh, automation is coming into them. Automation is a part. Uh, that's because of the automation robotics is possible nowadays uh, so you can see more far more intelligent robots are there right now in industries uh, even most automobile industries make most use of them again you can find in manufacturing industries uh, if you go by uh, in manufacturing industries just like manufacturing of uh, uh, assembling of mobile phones uh, even uh, in uh, assembling of vacuum cleaners small uh, devices or it might be a uh, Television assembly unit LEDs nowadays we are going we are seeing very much in them in our houses. So these are actually assembling units or we can call it as a manufacturing units. They are also right now automated. Minimum and the less uh, use of a human is work a human workforce is there because of the reason uh, is that we need a precision we need a quality we need uh, we need the quantity also. So that's why the machines are for functioning over there 24 by 7 and this is all possible because of the plc that is making happen in this process again the food processing industry if we go by in food processing industry uh, various uh, industries just like uh, baking uh, even uh, uh, frying cooking and various kind of operations has been done with the help of plc even you can uh, see in this uh, video small uh, uh, at the this my bottom picture you can see here that uh, a simple uh, even this rolling us uh, till the molding of this folding of this whole specific small item is done with the help of a robot so this is all kind of things you can do because of the plc because this whole the programming is done in the plc that's why it is important and this is where the plc is used even in packaging industry packaging is very much important uh, actually there is a uh, basic uh, in packaging we call it 3p that's a uh, we, can, we need to package it in a specific way. We uh, can't actually uh, say that uh, if you just uh, go and pack anything in a certain way, because if you are handling glass, you need to be a very specific in a manner. If you are uh, right now, if you are need the protection, you might need preservation, you need promotions, or uh, it can be, you can see the three P's are important. The packaging should be like this. It should have protection, preservation, and promotion. So this all things should be taken care of and it is not always possible with the help of human hands. That's why it is important, just like paper boxes or uh, paper packing, or it might be some corrugated box packing, plastic box packing. Various kind of things uh, has to be uh, done with this, uh, is done with, with the help of this PLC. So, sorry, just uh, So this is all it is possible because of uh, this field. And uh, there are many more applications you can go. <clears throat> You can go in this field. So uh, there are various application of PLC. So uh, this is some of I have highlighted, and you might find more than this. So I hope you have you have give, uh, got the uh, in which industries you will find PLC. So right now there is a question in which industry where you will not find PLC. So that answer is very difficult to find. And if you search in the uh, context by using a keyword where the PLC is, you will find many options on the Google itself. The next, uh, there are. Uh, if you think about where, what, how the PLC started, what was the history behind it? Uh, so the PLC uh, started with the since with the help of uh, there is a actually a nice story behind the starting of PLC. If I go directly to the history, uh, there was some uh, at the end, starting of the PLC. If you think there was actually very much race of uh, developing the controller which is much more convenient to the industrial applications. And in this race, uh, there were many, uh, actually, uh, initially, if you think about what was there before PLC, was there any automation? If I just do a question with you, let's think about what was there before PLC in, an, in the field of automation. Was there automation of industry before the field, before the PLC arrived? Yes, there was an automation. Even I'm also teaching this one of this thing in my PLC courses to the students also, uh, in this case, they, they are impart them a relay logic based system because relay is the most important thing. Uh, if you are able to understand the relay based panels, if you are able to develop a logic called an automatic logic without the help of any uh, logic controller, just with the help of relays, 
then you are very much aware then you would be very much easily uh, uh, you would be i would say you would be able to get the essence how to develop the logic in the plc just by if you know how to develop a logic using relays that is important that is important because the initial phase you must know about it so this is how in 1960s uh, this was started and since 1960s uh, it has been there the first it was actually there are some fun facts i would say uh, in that was bradford associates which was initially run by richard morley or richard dick morley so he won the contract actually in that case and they quickly formed a new company and uh, that uh, around this technology called they called it as a modicon what they called it is modicon because there was a technology called modular digital control kind of technology that's why the modicon name emerged and uh, that was the only reason in 1969 by the june they were selling this uh, first plc called the 084 and this was their 84th project actually and which was sold over uh, 1000 units so you might understand at that uh, time in during 1969 so it's quite older even might older than your parents to a certain uh, if you some of them are listening now and uh, there's early uh, experience this gave birth to the next model that was the model 84 model 184 in 1973 and which set modicon as an earlier leader in the programmable controller so you might understand uh, from how the journey of plc started and uh, certain questions like was there automation before plc now you must not say no you must say yes was there was but it was not on a controller based but it was fully uh, on a mechanical and electromechanical based called as a relay based panels and contractor based panels were there uh, yeah uh, what are the manufacturers who are the manufacturers in this plc right now in current market today's scenario there are various manufacturers in this uh, uh, plc uh, producing manuf uh, plcs uh most uh, one of the most uh, well renowned uh, of them is Siemens ABB Allen Bradley even Omron G fan of Delta Mitsubishi and uh, various others are uh, the manufacturers you will find in PA, uh, this market Siemens Allen Bradley are much more known for them ABB is known for their robots and uh, G Fanuc is also known from his packaging robots and various even Delta PLCs and all those things I work specially with the Siemens PLC I have bit knowledge about Allen Bradley and all those things because I am uh, working right now in a system integrator with the uh, the this system integrators are actually our partnered solution partner with the uh, to the Siemens so we I have more knowledge about Siemens controller and uh, yeah we'll move ahead to the next slide so right now we have a basic idea of what is plc where is used and uh, how to uh, how well, how it started where from where it started what are the roots of the plc and uh, wh who are the manufacturers apart from all this information the there is a core architecture of a plc that doesn't differ you might choose any brand out of the listed you have seen right now the list which i've shown to you apart from that you will find plc that is used specifically it has the uh, it can be divided this internal architecture into four devices there is an input module there is an output module there is a cpu central processing unit and a power supply so these four uh, structures you can find what the, what is the uh, importance of input and output modules it's quite simple from the name itself input module just it is sensing the input from the devices at the same time what is uh, need of the output module it actually generates certain kind of signals the signals might be an ac signal or dc signal or it might be a non potential free contact who knows because depend on the uh, type of output module you select you get the output so it is not a fixed so never ever understand the plc as a fixed device just like in uh, simple microcontrollers or arduinos you are hearing right now nowadays you might think arduinos are good enough but when you come to plc you will find it is more easy uh, yeah they are not that pocket friendly as arduino but uh, it's uh, good to know nowadays even plcs are right now getting more cheaper because of the uh, competition but they are not that related to cheaper to compare to arduino but they are easy to configure there are a wide range of uh, modules are available even the extension is possible so that is more important thing uh, apart from as you can see there is some uh, in isolation in between uh, this is for the protection purpose so in case if there, there is some wrong signal for example if this module takes uh, dc24 signal and uh, you inserted a signal you actually join a signal of 250 volt uh, ac source and in this case it might 
damage my CPU. My CPU is the most important and the core part of my uh, whole system. As you are aware, as your brain is damaged, no matter how good your hands and legs are, it might of no use. Similarly, if my PLC is damaged, my, my PLC damage means my CPU is damaged, it is of no use by having as many as good as input outputs. So that's why there is a isolation. This isolation prevents any problem happens with this input module will remain to this input module. It will not affect my CPU. Similarly, with the output case, it is kept isolated no matter if someone by mistake com connects an input to this module by mistake, it won't affect my CPU. So my CPU will always remain uh, in a safe, uh, in, in a, always in safety manner, I would say. It will always be safe apart from this input and output model. They are uh, subjected to your hand, how you use it. And uh, generally the program is stored in the non-volatile memory. So it doesn't uh, loss from it when the power is off. And the communication with the IO devices uh, and programming devices and all this has been done with the help of this, all this, the communication is the major part. So it's not only processing, my program it also communicating at the same uh, time so i will just go into the next part that will help you to understand uh, how plc actually is working these are we can call it as simple architecture what plc includes into it a plc system is made up of and uh, yeah uh, before we go in depth into it uh, let's just let me make you understand how is actually scanned into the plc and uh, how the PLC uh, is working and what are the things to be taken care of, what is what we call the scan cycle and uh, how the PLC executes the logic, uh, how it reads input and executes the program. So now you might understand from this uh, very example, there is read inputs, execute program, diagnostic communication, update out output, this kind of cycle. Now in this cycle, it is continuously it is showing that there is a revolution. They are following one again. It's in circular form. Why I'm showing why I'm showing this in circular form is that it is actually continuously processing. It is not just like that when you uh, just uh, just make process on and it is one time it is run and uh, after running it one time it stops again no it doesn't happen like this in case of plc it is continuously running whatever the program you're writing in the plc it is actually continuously running from top to bottom it's scanning the uh, program and it is keeping it continuously uh, scanning unless this plc is in run mode so here you can see an example uh here uh, you can see there is a reading input from uh, if you're pressing but this button a plc is reading the input and then it goes, it executes the program. It sees this is a program, it executes the program depending on whatever the logical program you have written, it adjusts the output. So in this case, the one thing is not included, that's a diagnostics and communication, because in this case, there is a possibility that their error might occur while pro processing a program or a communication is down in a certain way. Because PLC as an individual controller, nowadays you would, won't find certain kind of systems. You will find a very, a uh, system that is integrated in a form just like there is various PLCs are in communication, not only in communication with uh, the same brands, but with the other bands, there are other uh, plants, I would call it as a, a, a different sections of the industries are now communicating with each other because of this communication facility that is available with the PLC. And that has made our system more handy uh, and more useful for the industries. Uh, that's why you will find various communications are established between the PLCs. Uh, what exactly happens in input as it detects the inputs uh, of uh, states of inputs and in program cycle, it executes all these uh, states of program. So it says uh, at what uh, what are the instructions that is written in the program? It might be some on-off instructions. It might be some uh, decides on what is the input given to my PLC. Other than that, the output in, in output case, you will find uh, there are some output, uh, the ladder scan, there is some scan happens in the program and it updates that program. And uh, that program is updating my output memory of my PLC and that output memory is written to my output card. So actually PLC is not uh, working in a, the fashion you understand, just like pressing the button and it gives the output. Whatever the you're giving input to the PLC, it is stored in some memory. 
that PLC takes the, the input from that memory, it scans uh, the, uh, according to program, generates one memory called output memory, and that is stored somewhere. And that memory is again, uh, uh, I would say, scanned by the output device, and that is what we got the output. This happens in a very microsecond, and this is all called uh, in milliseconds and nanoseconds, which is what we call this uh, scan cycle of a PLC. Uh, you can just understand that is far more than enough uh, explanation of this uh, scan cycle. Uh, what is the scan pattern? How exactly PLC scans your program? In this, all the whatever I have said right now, you have understand to a certain extent what PLC does, how it scans, and all these things. It goes like this. If you see in this uh, very first image, this is a program. This is a program written in ladder. You can see it starts from the uh, horizontal scanning. First of all, it scans the horizontal. It doesn't go to the second run. This is what we call the run. So it goes to the first scan, and then it goes to the second by the vertical scan. So it does like this horizontal and goes vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical. It is. Uh, I would say this image would be more clear. This is a horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical. So it goes like this. And this keeps on continuously running. This is all what we call the scan pattern, or you can understand this is how the scan cycle runs. Uh, I hope this information is uh, quite useful. So if you are unaware up till now how PLC worked, how the program executed right now, you might have that got the information to a certain, uh, I hope this, is, like, this might be useful. Then uh, why PLC is used nowadays? Because of its certain capabilities. The very foremost, these are the capabilities not subjected to any brand of PLCs. These are, you will find this capability is almost in all industrial grid PLCs that is available right now in the market. Uh, first of all, is the logic control. That is the first and the foremost part why PLC is uh, emerged into the market. Uh, there is the timer functions. You need not to take any timers from outside. There is a built-in timers in the my system. So in this case, you need to uh, just execute. You just need to insert a timer in your program and you will find uh, it is all right running. Counter counting applications can be done with the help of uh, these counters, integrated counters. Analog signal. So you might be uh, knowing of programming. You might be, if you are not knowing to the programming, you might be operating a system just like a digital uh, logic. I would say just like at your home right now, you're sitting. If I say press that switch, you will say, okay, you'll just press that switch and the bulb is on. So that's a kind of digital logic. It's just by giving some command, and that command is either one or zero, and the output is either one or zero. Bulb is on or bulb is off. But in certain situations, if I say, uh, make the flames high of a gas, of a gas stove, you would say, uh, okay, you will make the flames high. But does it mean it is one or zero? It's not. It's a kind of smooth control. You will find the temperature is varying depending on where you place the situation of the uh, very place this uh, I would say this location of the knob of a gas so in this case whatever the flame uh, whatever the amount of heat you needed you will adjust accordingly to your sensing you will just sense whatever the amount of heat you needed and after sensing that you will adjust the flame if you want to cook chapatis or in this case you can just uh, imagine how you are going you are not uh, playing the logic of one zero you are actually adjusting the flames in certain way that helps you to cook your chapatis in a better manner. So this certain kind of uh, processing, you might understand that is also coming in industries where we are not dealing with a small amount of small volume. There are the huge volumes of liquids, even milk pasteurization kind of process and all these things takes place. So they are all the analog process and they need the analog control kind of situation. That's why the analog signal is important. PID control is again the part of the analog signal. So it's what we say. If you're not aware of PID control, no issue. It's very easy. Actually, uh, when I was an undergraduate, when I was a graduate student, even at my time, PID was a kind of a thing that what it does, even I was uh, just uh, knowing it was a big thing for me. Right now, I'm able to tune the PID. I'm working with PIDs, and it's very easy. It's very easy to understand with the practical concepts. You can understand that way. And there are certain mathematic functions. You need not to provide any extra uh, softwares to it. Uh, PLCs are right now able to do these arithmetic operations. You can integrate, you can differentiate certain kind of applications. You can even do subtraction, addition, modulo of certain mathematics. You can just create all the mathematics into it. You can do communication. That's a major benefit. HMI is, again, you have seen the SCADA screens. Uh, you can just see the mobile. With the help of mobile, you can just uh, explore many things. You can see your UI is updated with uh, the softwares and all this is updated. So you can actually create your own user interface. You can 
if I give you a power to create your own user interface and that user interface will help you to control any system or just like in home automation, you're controlling your uh, lights and all these things with the help of your mobile. So creating such kind of UI is based on this HMI. We also teach this thing in our uh, practical courses in our uh, academy. Uh, signaling and listing is again a part of archiving, I would say, and documentation. This is because uh, there are certain right now uh, industries are moving not only towards the controller, they don't need a simple computer that will all compute the data and does nothing. They need some small, uh, they need to make this thing happen right now. You might have heard a word called Industry 4.0. Uh, to make that possible, controller must have certain uh, features, just like they must be archiving some data. They must save some data. I mean, to say archiving means by the archiving word means they must save some data. They must some have that list of data, what's to be saved, uh, what happens, the log to be maintained. And this has to be given to some SCADA servers and that will maintain the report and you will get it at the end of the day. That will help you to not only uh, understand what was how was the today's performance but also forecast how the your future uh, performance is going to be what would be your goals will your goals will be achieved with this system or not so there are certain kind of uh, things uh, in this system and uh, real time functions are the basic they are the whole, every plc is right now doing this real time function there is no delay in performing the function and uh, what are the advantage as i said why the PLC is being greatly and vastly used in this uh, PLC uh, in this industries? It is because it reduces the space of controller. So you no, need not to have a big controllers. It's a very small controller. It takes very small space, and are throwing a big advantage. Energy saving. So there is no mechanical part. So that's other an energy saving device. Uh, ease of maintenance. Uh, compared to uh, there is no moving part, so there is no kind of maintenance. You don't need to open it for a certain way. Just you need to maintain all the ambient temperature and all those things. The controller is always healthy. Economical. See, for example, if you go, if you want to use some controller at your home, and it uh, costs around lakhs of rupees, so it's not economical. Then how is it economical in terms? Right now, that lakhs of controller is used to control the process, which costs around crores of rupees. So in this term, you if you compare, you will find it is more economical to the cost of the process you are controlling. So in this way, it is a term as economical and it also has a greater life. It can go uh, beyond uh, uh, 21 years. So generally we have 21 years of uh, time, uh, lifespan of a PLC based on it is maintained in a very healthy environment. It, might, it will not get uh, automatically into problem unless you there is a problem with the environment or there is some liquid spill on it there is some uh, gases in the environment which are harmful for my uh, equipment electronic equipment in my plc there are there are certain chemical plants which have to replace the plc every uh, t twice or try uh, twice uh, of five in five years so why it is happening because of the chemicals uh, they are all destroying these all things they are they are actually harmful for this electronic uh, equipment over there. Even there is a tremendous flexibility, you need not to rewire and re, uh, rewire again in a specific system if you want to just change some behavior of a controller or there is some change in the system, you can easily do it. Uh, the sort of project time, so today uh, the projects before PLC, when there was an automation with the help of Relay, it used to take around uh, uh, several years, I would say two to three years to execute. Nowadays with the help of PLC, it is reduced to one year to a minimum if a project takes three years with the help of relay based logic contact based panel and if you are going to do it with the help of this it will take one year a shorter span and it will also reduce your efforts when you need to uh, re, uh, you need to just change certain things into it it is very easy to modify modification is quite easy and the beneficial part of this plc is using uh, is that only the modification is very easy in this way and archiving and documentation as i said it is a part of nowadays the plc has so I hope uh, you have plenty of information. Apart from that, now uh, if I say uh, this is what a this is what PLC we have. We up till now we have cleared about the advantages, disadvantages, and all those things. So if you think about what are the programming languages, how we can uh, program the PLC, and uh, what is the benefit of programming? So benefit of programming is just uh, we can uh, do our uh, we can just execute any application what we need but how to program then it comes a question so right now there are file languages as per IEC 611313 uh, that's a standard of IEC standard 
uh, which has actually categorized language five PLC languages, and uh, there are uh, graphical. You can classify it again into a textual and graphical kind of languages. So if you see PLC programming languages, uh, they are generally it refers to a set of semantic or methods. Uh, so that allows the user to communicate information to the PLC right now. That is what the major aim is. So here the textual languages are those in form of text and consist command that a user must be familiar in order to create programs. So in textual languages, you might have if you are not aware. Uh, you might have seen some uh, 8051 or 805, uh, 805. Uh, I, I don't remember, 8052 or 8051, this is a microcontroller over there. Uh, in this case, you will find there are certain nem uh, mnemonics. Uh, mnemonics, in this case, uh, there are just like A for and, O for or, and uh, there are some equal to kind of and jump, JMP, JNZ, certain kind of, uh, uh, I would say, mnemonics are there to write a program that are kind of textual based language that is also available in PLC. Apart from that, you can also find a C based languages just like you find in Arduino. That's a structured text languages. So in structured text languages, you will find language like if else this can you can write a loops into this. And uh, apart from that, uh, textual languages are not that easy to uh, understand in one go because of the reasons you need to be aware of the language itself, first of all, before you write. But uh, if you are a very beginner, if you want to learn PLC, I would say ladder is the best way to start with. And it's a graphical language. So graphical languages are generally uh, easy to uh, easily understood by the humans in this case. So you will find even function block diagram is again an improvisation of the ladder. And sequential function chart is nothing but it's a kind of sequencing of a ladder to exit, execute your logic in a certain manner. So these are the languages that are defined in uh, uh, as per the IEC standards. So now uh, we'll just go in depth of, just uh, discuss a bit detail about the ladder, langu ladder diagram language. So let's go into this ladder language. So there are three basic elements of this ladder language. We call it as a rung, branches, and instructions. So now uh, in this, what are the key points? So you will find a uh, rung generally, as I have shown in a uh, previous figure, rungs are scanned from uh, zero to the, from the top to the bottom. Top is the zero and the highest number is that at the bottom. And rungs are left from left to right. And in this case, you will just understand this is what we call by rung. So here, this is called the rung. There is a positive power rail and the negative power rail. The power flows from positive to negative as we are aware of the basic, uh, how the power flows to the, in a basic circuit. So it's a conventional way of power flow. You can see the positive to negative. In between, you can write your program with the help of NONCs. Uh, certain kind of contacts are available. I will show you a basic program at the end of this. Um, so what are the branches? So branches are generally, even you can find they are creating a different path. Uh, in this case, you will find uh, to they are actually creating a different path that can be an input or output for in this case we'll see in the example itself and there are instructions so branches are required to uh, create if there is a rung and you need to create a branch to it because you need some parallel path to your logic just understand a parallel circuit there is a series circuit you need to add some parallel to it so branches are helpful in developing the parallel circuit to it and uh, if you understand with the help of instruction, you will find there are input instruction and output instruction. In the input instruction, yeah, there are certain kind of uh, comparisons or specific conditions you have, have to be written. Just for example, if I say, make the switch on, the light will be on, for example. So the switch is an input kind of instruction and light will be on and off, that would be, has to be written in the output kind of instructions. So. And this, uh, that is important. So key uh, input instruction are the part in this way. Uh, there are two kinds, so you can just divide the instructions and this is where the ladder is written. So before we move ahead into uh, this all, let me show you an example. This is what PLC programming example I'm showing you in front. You might have learned about this logic gates. I have kept the simplest one and or not. And over here, this is a simple, you can find a tooth table. As you are aware of this truth table, so it's a zero zero. We know the and should be zero. Zero one and should be zero. Again, zero one zero and should be zero. And one one and should be one. Similarly, the R has been written and the not. You can see over here. Try to relate. Try to relate this and this over here. So you can see A zero B zero output should be zero. That's the and output. So you can see as you know power flows from positive 
to negative. If this is zero and this is zero, no matter how hard the power tries, the power can't flow. And if either any one of them is zero, you can see the power cannot flow. So this is what we call it. These are compulsory conditions. So and works on the compulsory condition. This is how the series circuit. Uh, this is what the NO contact. So this is what we call the NO contact. It is represented with this symbol. Here you can find. So in this symbol, you can find the power flow from here to here. Either A is zero or B is zero. Power will not flow to AND. And if both are one, the power will flow to this AND. So here, this is the truth table, which actually can be proved with the help of this logic. Actually, you write this only in my PLC and you can make the logic happen. For example, if you need to press two switches and make the bulb on, you can just understand with this, uh, that example with the help of this ladder. There are two switches and it is compulsory to press both of them and then only the light lamp will be on. So this is the case you can understand over here. Similarly in OR, if a case, if you say two switches are there, any one of you press it, lamp should be on. So in this, you can just represent it with the help of R. You can see this is what we call the branch. This is what we call the branch. So here we are creating a parallel path. So that's why branch is needed. Here you can see either of them is one, lamp should be one. So here in this case, A is one or B is one, no matter or both are one. This will R will be always one. Or in case any, both of them are zero, then only it will be zero. So that is very easy to relate. So you can understand why ladder, I said ladder is very much easy and essential language. If you understand it very in a manner, you can actually develop various logics. It is far more easy than uh, writing logic to your Arduino itself. Even I was struggling at the initially with the Arduino, so that I never struggled with the PLC in this case of a ladder. And uh, the not, uh, it's a simple, we know, uh, sorry, it is, it, there's my mistake over here. It should be one. So if this is one, uh, let me just correct it. I will just correct it. I'll just correct it. Okay. So I will just write it. Yeah. So now we can see if this is one, this is zero, this is zero, this is one. So it's a very easy way to understand. So right now you can see there's an, this is a NC contact. This is a NO contact. This is a NC. So it is already closed. So if there is no input to my A, it is already closed. You no need to press the switch. It will already give you the output. So zero, it's a one. And if you press the switch, one means you press the switches. So as soon as you press the switch, the lamp will be off. So it's very interesting to note. If I give a logic call, if you press the switch, lamp should be off. If the switch is off, lamp should be on certain kind of logic you can do with the help of this uh, sample I have shown in the form of NOT gate. This can be written in the PLC in very easy manner. So I hope you have got an idea how to understand this uh, logic making concept in this PLC with the help of this gate. There are actually complexities. You can add more complexities to your logic understanding. First, you must start with the gate. I must recommend you must start with the AND OR, NOT, XOR, XNOR. Uh, and uh, NAND, NOR, this kind of gates, you must start with them. And then you go on building up complicated and complex logic. Let me show you an example, how complicated logic you can develop and how you can understand. Uh, I will uh, just start one of my application. I will uh, just share one of my screen. So please uh, kindly wait for a minute. I will just start the application. Yeah, I'm just starting it. So kindly, please be have patience. Uh, and uh, yeah. So I'm just adjusting the screens and. Uh, So let me share and uh, screen. So I hope you can see. So you can see over here. 
uh, let me just start. This is my application. I hope it is visible. Uh, yeah. So this is my uh, process. So here, let me explain you. I will just open one editor. And I will just load my program and I will just explain you. Uh, So here, this is a process. Here, this is a box a gris in a green color. And uh, this box will travel. And it will travel uh, with the help of this motor. This motor has given some uh, output address. So I need to make this uh, motor on with the help of any of this button. And when the as soon as the motor is on, it should show the run indication. When the box is uh, on uh, not running, when the motor is not running, it should show it is a standby mode. And when the box is full, actually what happened, this is a silo, it's a tank, there is a solenoid wall. So as I, this box moves at the bottom of this, the solenoid wall should open. This, le this level sensor will indicate the level of box that is filled. If it is completely filled, the box should move ahead. And again, the box will, this line will keep continue rolling and rolling. And for that, I need to draw, I need to make some lo uh, logic. So in this case, there is a logic that I have written over here with the help of NONCs. I have shown this kind of symbols right now. This is called the NO. This is the NC. Uh, there are various symbols. Uh, this is called the coil. And this is a latch and unlatch kind of operators. I will not explain much more deep into it. But this is a simple language uh, logic that I make using ladder only. There is no other languages used in this uh, formation of this logic. So what should happen, I have explained. I will just press my F2 button and uh, I will just start my process. I can stop my process with the help of F1. So you can just see uh, there is a, uh, so how, how when the run command should uh, be green in color, when my output means my motor is working, my run should be on. So you can just understand like that. When my st uh, standby command should be there, when my motor is not working, NC means my motor is not working, this output should be on, output is, one zero three. So you can just understand how the logic I have written. It's a logic of made in twelve runs. So I can I will just uh, show you. So this is all the logic that I have written. So if you want to know more, understand it. You can just uh, I will just give my contact number to you at the end. You can just talk to me later. Uh, I will just uh, start this application. What I will do now? You have understand what we need to do. This is the logic I have written. I will just go back. Now you can see the indication of standby on my screen. Uh, on my left side, uh, just let me indicate here. You can see over here, you can see. So this is what the standby indication. And now you can see this will be working. This is just for your example, to show you the system, how the system is. No program is written over here. The program is written over this side. So let me just uh, show you an example. So I will just press the button F2. Let me just press it. Uh, option F2. So you can see the run command is there. The box is automatically stopped. The liquid is filled. You can see again the full indication is given. So the box is full. It indicates again the box arrives. So you can see the full indication indicates the box is full. Again, you will see when the full indication is indicated. Just see and you will understand. So it looks very simple, this process. Uh, it, it actually it is simple, but you need to write this thing in this manner that this logic, this should be indicated and this should be simulated in this way. So this is important for you to understand. So I hope uh, this sample is quite good enough to make you understand how the ladder logic is uh, easy and uh, uh, I would say the important initially when you start learning this PLC. So. Uh, this is why it is important. If I want to stop the process, I will just press the F1. Uh, just I will press the F1. Let me just press it. So you can see I press the F1. If I start again, I will stop again, start again. You can see the operation of buttons I'm making. So, so I start it. Let me just start it. Stop it. I will start it. So you can see it's very easy. You can make this thing anyway. So this is how the logic is written. And this is all the thing has been done. So I will uh, just stop sharing. And uh, I will 
just come back to you. I'm just sharing my presentation. I'll just close this. This is the window, and uh, we'll just wait. And problem with my screen. Yeah, and uh, okay. Okay, now uh, I'm ready. So, yes. So, right now you have got an idea. So, how easily you can write the logic, first of all. It's not that hard. You start with the gates, you understand the ladder, you will be able to understand. Actually, understanding of ladder is that much important, I would say. It will not only clear your basic concepts of the logic development, but also will clear give you clarity of understanding in the various, uh, for example, electrical students, I would recommend because I belong to electrical background. Just like DOL starters, motor starters, uh, star delta starters. You, no matter how hard the circuit is, no matter someone asks you to create a automation, home automation just by creating using a relay. You don't want to use any uh, controller or anything. You can just create it. Uh, just uh, make sure you know a good knowledge. You have good knowledge of electrical wiring, but developing a logic using this uh, language is very easy. You can make this thing happen without help, without the help of controller. Uh, to a partially, you can just automate your home to a certain extent. So that is very much important and very much easy to understand uh, this programming language. So right now, up till now, I hope most of your doubts, most of your uh, things might have clear to a certain extent. Right now, I will show a bit what are the courses, uh, a bit of uh, advertisement from my side. And later on, we will just uh, move on to the scope of this PLC, I would say this industry automation. Uh, where is it? What are the career opportunities? Should we go or should we not opt for this? You might be able to make a decision based on upcoming slides. So I will just go with my academy itself. So right now, this is my academy, Hamek Academy. It's located at the Fatehgan right now, uh, as we are uh, closed because of this lockdown. But we offer certain kind of courses over here. We start with the very foundation to the complicated to the advanced for courses. Here, we also, uh, from very foundation, when to opt the foundation course, when you're very much new to this field, uh, and uh, you have just completed your uh, diploma or uh, you are just in your graduation level or just at the completion of a graduation or you have completed, for instance. You may come. It's very easy uh, to understand. There is not much, uh, I would say, complicated thing. The important thing is that uh, if you are a diploma student, you must complete or you must be on the verge of completing your diploma. And if you are a graduate student, you uh, you might have uh, started the graduation. You might come after, uh, I would say, a second or third year. You must come in the third year itself. That's a very good for them. So that is very much helpful in understanding uh, this uh, foundation course. We start with the base. We go for the PLC. We also go for visualizations that include HMI and SCADA kind of uh, system. We also teach them DCS, VFD, variable frequency drives. Uh, see, as I, as I said, we are not only teaching you all these things, we actually have various projects. We have various numerous clients and uh, we have we are actually imparting you the uh, actually upcoming whatever the projects uh, I'm working on or my colleagues are working on and I find something instruction interesting to share. We actually share that from with the help of uh, this all this training academy. We also provide information based on the various communications. We also help you to set up actual industry kind of communication in my lab. My lab is quite good. I'll just show my pictures, some of them. And we also train on the electrical panel because we have our manufacturing site. Right now it is open at uh, GIDC at with a minimum number of hosts because of some uh, lockdown provisions, uh, government rules. So this is all uh, going on right now. And uh, you will find not only the theoretical but very practical training over here. Uh, this is my academy. Here you will find we there are various students. This is my academy at Fateganj. Uh, you will find uh, various practical kits are there. Students are practicing many various type of controller uh, and various brands are there from PLC to VFD and all these things we do at our Hamak Academy. And uh, apart from that, we are providing a certificate course. So this is how our certificate looks like. And uh, these are the benefits of uh, training at uh, Hamak Academy. Uh, so 
in this we also provided placement assistance and 100% uh, guarantee about that uh, in this case so you have 100% guarantee on hands on also so don't worry so there is a quite only theoretical way not the way which we teach or which we get teaching from the university right now i have seen because this is what my core problem as i also work in one of the university itself the parul, parul itself uh, it was a good experience but right now the way we are actually uh, trying to uh, impart practical education uh, it becomes a time limited we can't uh, make a course more than four years that's again a boundness but we want to impart many things that creates a problem for a university to manage between the practical and the theoretical portion i hope they will find certain good solution uh, we can we'll going to uh, we are actually apparting this kind of uh, with the help of this academy we are providing this kind of trainings to you apart from that we do a uh, site visits as as i said this is our gidc facility over here and we have various industry experts and uh, as we have various clients also so we they also visit to us and we also make uh, you available for them for example if they have some expert session we also include you in them uh, apart from that uh, these are our clients they are not only we are not only providing training to them we are actually indulge in uh, with the projects to them even my first training i started was the saint gobain if you don't know you it is a, one of the biggest franchise of france uh, we started with them and then it was very i was very much new to this even i was working with very new so i was starting with this high mac itself and then various clients i have come across so we are have projects we are providing training uh, right now even we are providing support right now crompton reviews hero motor cop and various i have pro i was providing support in this lockdown uh, from home itself uh, and uh, these are our clients so again so apart from this all these things so what we are right now up to so is there any scope on this uh, what is the scope of this industry automation is there a need to learn this thing is there any benefit of this automation to the society the various uh, things would be coming to your mind first of all i would say yes automation has both the things positive and as if you, if you just see a coin always has two sides it's just like an coin it has some positive impact on the society and also negative impact from the way people are looking at it right now uh, how the positive impact is the very first statement you will find automation often reduces the cost and improves the output both in terms of quantity and quality so what does it mean signifies so if you are doing automating a plant so we are getting a quantity production and also quality production uh, if we are properly applied this all things you will find it can actually free workers from unpleasant tedious and hazardous job first of all this is what we call it as a benefit of having automation that is important because there are certain kind of job you won't allow people to be there if you are operating a nuclear plant you can't allow maximum things to be handled with the people you will keep it automated just under the regulation under the observation of a supervisor you don't need many workers working with this uh, uh, nuclear plants or any if you want to maintain a huge amount of even in dairy industries if you want to maintain a huge amount of milk if you are incoming pasteurizing and all this packing till that you can't keep all the labors all the time active with the same uh, agility and doing the work in the same quality that's automation becomes important thing and in spite of all this beneficial uh, you will find there is problem is that actually automation is killing the jobs now you would say yes you agree to a certain point automation is rightly stealing the job i would say yes it is stealing the job but problem is it is not stealing the job to which you actually the jobs you are focusing on is a semi skilled one right now the jobs has also evoluted with the help of this automation the society has not remained in the similar manner which was, which was 100 years ago today the society is much larger and if you keep working in the same strategic way same strategies no matter how hard you try you won't be able to satisfy the society's demand Uh, so for this purpose you have seen automation is right now rigorously applied in various industries and uh, this is the only reason uh, the semi skilled jobs has been evaluated into more skillful one so there are huge opportunities for the skillful uh, automation engineers i would say the skillful students also problem is that you might not be able to get the proper uh, amount of skills from the current uh, organization infrastructure or might be some other case might be some other purpose but 
that is what we are trying to do we need to evolve not only from the education's point of view but we need to evolve from the practical point of view so by in this case of advancement of industry you will find the automation will not be a demand at the future you will not find it is the demand of industry it will become the foremost necessary of the you know, any industry because of the reason the large societies uh, are societies are growing out of control that now population is booming there is no doubt in that we don't have a control for that for controlling the population right now but at least we have to do something like that we can actually satiate satisfy the demand of our large growing societies for that this is the time of engineer right? this is a, now the this is the need of time for every engineer to upgrade their knowledge and skills and hence that will help them to contribute society in a greater way so what i'm talking about is not getting a job not getting you a simple uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, environment where you are actually uh, feeling more safe i'm giving you an environment there are certain challenges i'm making you a contributor not as an uh, you are actually uh, in a situation just like whatever you are getting you are trying to get everything from the society you are actually right now you will be a contributor to the society in one way that is most of the biggest benefit what i enjoy uh, being in this industry right now uh, i hope you you might just uh, just you evolve yourself you will find it's more fun of working in this automation industry uh, what i have experienced from my experience i will i will i can make sure that it is very fun of working in this uh, what are the opportunities so yeah let's see the opportunities right now as i said semi skilled jobs are not there there are very less very few jobs have evolved so you must be evolving your skills for that if you go if you have proper skills and if you need an uh, right now if you are as an automation engineer if as you want to work as an automation engineer where you will find the opportunities there are certain oems and spm manufacturers what they mean there are certain original equipment manufacturers or uh, special purpose machine manufacturers they what they are doing they actually provide uh, make they are actually using certain automation controllers from of certain makes and uh, assembling a in a machine big machine it might be a machine of packaging it might be machine of pasteurization it might be machine of any x y or z application so certain kind of machine manufacturers are there and they need automation engineers for them and they are booming sector this is one of the demanding sector there is again a system integrator and a product channel partner i am actually working in system integrator and the product channel partner right now so uh, to them i am uh, right now in this uh, presenting in front of you uh, so that is what the i say i am enjoying as being one of with the part of one of them and there are parent product companies there are automation solution companies manufacturing companies process industries and it industries uh, even uh, we are in the it industry you can't uh, say that uh, there is no scope in it industry how, how the automation comes in it industry right now cloud computing data handling managing cyber security is is all the terms which are very much important when we are working towards the integrated system these are the most important part uh, we need to focus on so that is what the biggest thing uh, right now uh, one of the i would say the demanding sector so based uh, i don't uh, know to what amount of hardware or software you know so whatever your current sub domain is i would say you must look to brush your technical skills especially in embedded system or electrical engineer or, or basic programs skills to a certain extent if you do that i can help you to do that because we are actually uh, taking a step towards launching this new course of 5 days 5 webinars uh, this is a certificate course so again you will be getting at the end of the completion of this course you will be get, uh, will be with a certificate and uh, this is the course foundation course so again we are diluted our course we are not only diluted the course we also reduce the fees for it so it's a, actually a paid course but uh, it will be a more dedicated kind of uh, course it is a, including two hours of lectures and uh, uh, more than that and half hours of doubt solving sessions so every lecture every webinar will have a doubt solving as well as imparting you as new skills apart from that uh, we also pro provide you not only this basic concept what today i have discussed more than that are there apart from that we will also teach you how to program plc the way that you have uh, right now you have seen one example what i have shown you how that uh, automatic filling uh, process so you will be able to develop that thing actually that would be your uh, various uh, starting uh, initially you would be starting with those kind of uh, logic developing wiring scheme tagging scheme logic development and you will be knowing the uh, what are the ranges in plcs and all those things 
So again, we are limited to a batch of 25. We are not exceeding more than that as we are focusing more on the student uh, skills improvement. And what you will get in this course will be introduction to the basic uh, industrial automation uh, concepts. Uh, we'll focus, uh, will be on every student as we are keeping it to a limited number and uh, demonstrate your logic upload download. So you will be uh, working with one of the software. You will be get an idea uh, specifically to the Siemens PLC and uh, testing and developing of logic, real time troubleshooting. And you will have some interactive faculty uh, with the expert faculty or some interactive sessions and uh, practicing examples and all these things will be based on this. Uh, what will be, you will be able to do at the completion of the course, what you will get. So here you will be able to understand the difference between the types of automation process, which are generally called a discrete and analog automation. There is a certain uh, concept to call it. There is a input output, to, what are the concept of input output and PLCs in depth, in more detail. Uh, you will be understanding the different industrial communication protocols, uh, how they are useful, why they are, and how to set up to a certain extent. You will be also get an idea how to draw. So for the third point, you can see the point, draw the wiring diagram for the relay and the contactor-based automation circuit. So we will not only provide you the method to how to work with the PLC, but we will also make you uh, to at that level that you might be able to draw the wiring diagram for relay and contactor based automation circuit. So that's a, again, a very beneficial part for that. Uh, you can uh, develop the various PLC program to a moderate complex, a moderate degree of complexity, uh, not a higher level automation system, but to a certain extent and uh, diagnosis and make correction in PLC program and have idea about various PLC. So this is a most of our pointed outcomes from this uh, webinar series. And uh, this is what uh, how much it costs. So it's uh, 9.99 right now. And uh, I will just show you. We have two batches, morning and evening. You can register. We can uh, make uh, the register as soon as soon as you register. We'll send you the link, and we can sorting um, uh, morning and evening batches in that. For this, uh, if you want to get more information, what you can do, you can go to this video. If you want to enroll, just you can write the hi max on the Google. And just by writing HiMac, you can go back to our training. And uh, over here, you will find there is no website. Over here, there is a base information about this process. And you can actually enroll in this where you are going to go into the training. And here, just you need to uh, just go down. Here, this is the information about the training. And uh, there is all about the webinar. And uh, you can just, this is my number and everything is written out there. And uh, you can just directly go and click on uh, if you have any inquiries or something like that. You can click on pay now, and over here you can find there's a directly written over there. You can just uh, write your all details name, uh, username, email ID, phone number, and at then you can pay now. You can click on pay now. You accept all the payment without a pay you or pay team. You can just pay for it in this case. Uh, so this is all a basic simple how to enroll at our website. If you are interested, you can just message me. I will just share my contact with you. So uh, this is uh, how to reach us. Uh, if you are interested, if you want to know more about us, if you are more interested in the such courses, let me know. Uh, this is our Instagram Hamac, and we also provide some learning videos on Hamac Academy YouTube channel. I would suggest uh, you today, if you are free or uh, the specifically GT students, you might go to this uh, Hymac Academy uh, YouTube channel. You will find some of the very interesting and learning videos. Some of them, as I said, how to develop an automation circuit, uh, really based on contact based circuit from a uh, logic, given logic, or given question. Uh, There's one of the video for that. We have actually I have conducted a webinar on that. There's a video of recording over there. This is my WhatsApp number. You can message me, you can contact me. Uh, and if there is any question answer, uh, you can uh, just ask me uh, so, or right, we can just conclude the session. Yes. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. One of the students from electrical department having a question. Okay. Yes. What, what is the role of rack and chassis in PLC system? Oh, sorry. What is the role of? What is the role of racks and chassis in PLC system? Wax and chassis. Yes. 
rack rack and chassis a uh, rack and chassis okay fine fine see there are the different uh, types of uh, plc as i said there are rack based plc and chassis chassis is nothing but a body and rack is nothing but an installation for example uh, let me just i will just share uh, one of the image uh, let let me just share one of from my screen i will just just unlock this uh, slide so just wait i will stop sharing and i'll share again uh, so i will share this thing to get an idea what is the difference between the rack and chassis there is more yeah so yeah I hope you are able to see the screen. Uh, there are actually the types of PLC. Uh, rack PLCs are generally this. This is a figure you can look into the picture. There's a rack into it, and you need to actually apply your cards into it. And uh, in chassis base, there is a chassis is nothing but the body over the itself. There are not much difference into it. A uh, rack based PLC is a common terminology. You will find it on uh, various uh, segments. Yes, uh, chassis you can just. Uh, understand it's the body of the plc nothing else or just the whole system rack based plc are there yeah is anything more sir one more question yeah what is the redundancy in plc uh, yeah redundancy in plc means uh, here you will find two plc right now the second example that's yes, the very good question that's uh, the very good slide in front of you right now you can see the two plcs are working right now at the same time redundancy means a network that has a spare for it for example if one plc fails in this case the other plc will take over it is actually plc is master and other is just uh, uh, looking the health of the master if in case some plc fails or certain it goes some problem the other plc will take over that is what the redundancy channel does this is all the redundancy is not in only the plc but it is in the whole network so if one fails another will take over that is what we mean by the redundancy in a system or in in the case of plc there are two plcs working uh, parallelly one of them is working one of them is just uh, seeing at the help of the help uh, health of the working plc must be this is how the redundancy works okay. yeah okay sir one more question for faculty side yeah. in market there are so many institute yeah is is offering automation courses students okay. are students are confused about where to go so which hmm. point consider initially they all give confirmation about placement also so okay even, uh, and after completion of this program when job are their starting salary is much lower approx 6000 to 7000 what is the yes. reason behind that a problem is that uh, initially say in this field there are various small system integrated in the local body right now and uh, big companies are there uh the big companies are not directly hiring uh from any a uh, new fresher this uh, field actually when i started even i started from very uh, low uh, low point and in this field initially i was having no experience i would say and even if they have experience they almost uh, give the same package problem is that in at the initial process this various local system integrators are there and when i would say this local uh, channel partners are there they just need some new fresh candidate but they want to check their skill they can't invest the full uh, they actually initially there is a mode of taking the student they first take it as a trainee and then they do as a uh, in, uh, i would say probation period and then they do as a confirmation so they have that uh, way of hiring the student there are proper specific kind of partners i was in one of them so initial salary is very much low and in probation period if they found they are good in training they actually increase in the probation period and at the end you get a handsome amount at the end of your confirmation but problem is that many of the students are not able to complete their training period which is of 3 months and i have seen this problem because of the reasons uh, most of the, uh, this uh, training institutes are giving 100% placement just like uh, i have said i will provide assistance but i can't guarantee to at 100% that i will be able to place you problem is that in the case of 100% placement they not they actually divert you from this field of automation i have seen these cases this happen that doing the course but whatever in the form they are working they are not actually uh, applying that knowledge it is certainly different from whatever they have learned so 
opportunities come but not in the way you are uh, trying to uh, from them it is off season kind of thing there is not a season of these opportunities whenever someone leaves there comes an opportunity and we actually recommend our students to them we are actually to a one post we recommend our two to three students and out of that two to three students one of them gets selected rest two are looking i know this is a current situation it can't be handled in one way there has to be addressed in a different way but this is the way I, we are actually working to it we are not only uh, what is what the other advantage we are go, uh, giving it our uh, academy is that we also have hamac private limited and we have various uh, requirement of students we are not hiring from out, outside we from the uh, previous year we are stopped hiring from outside we are actually hiring the students from our academy itself for the very basic reason is that we don't need to train them after taking them they have trained themselves in this uh, academy itself that is what the, how we are dealing with this concept right now so there is not for a uh, straight for our answer to this question but i would say this is a situation that is the only reason if someone is saying they are providing 100% uh, placement guarantee then i would say you must question them first of all where do will i get the place but in most of case i always say we are giving 100% placement assistance so we provide you help in getting but we never guarantee you because that's not a, a way to deal with this situation we never do the fake promise in this case and that is the only reason i have said initially when student is able to get into this campus placement they must have their proper skills right now i know the various university are trying to do that but problem is that whenever the big industries come they are looking for bigger opportunity bigger kind of skills into the students so you must understand the industry demand also so that's why the only reason is that sometimes the university also fails to convert that chance even we also fail to convert that chance if we won't provide a kind of training to our students so that is all the things right now we must have to work uh, uh, together for that we can't say there is a straight forward answer to for any one i hope uh, that is more clear yeah i hope so. sir one more question what is the yeah. difference between fixed plc and modular plc see fixed plcs are the plcs in which there the number of input and outputs are fixed uh, you can't exceed is input more than whatever the recommend just like you uh, think about arduino yeah. or think about a 40 pin uh, ic a 40 pin micro 8051 you more than 40 pin you want a 41th pin you can't add to it in this case similarly in case of arduino you want to extend the number of ios you can't but this is this is what happened with the fixed plc you can't exceed its number of ios but if you want to exceed the number of ios you need more input output channels then you can go for modular plcs this modular plcs allows you they are more flexible they allows you to add more number of input and output according to your requirement so there is no compulsion to purchase every card for it just purchase those cards which is required as per uh, which is good for, as per your requirement i hope that is clear okay sir okay sir thank you yeah. so much sir okay par university is very grateful to you for coming to this critical covid 19 situation and share your knowledge as well as valuable time with us with this digital platform so again thank you so much sir okay okay thank you thank you mank and uh, thank you all of you all the listeners thank you for your questions that was a nice thing uh, the best part is this having q and a with all of you and i hope this information is uh, might be useful for uh, all of you if you wish to know more about it i will just say go to my uh, youtube channel know about it uh, you might be there are many free webinars available over there i have already uploaded over there and the knowledge is very much great that is very much helpful just to upgrade to know about more about plcs and to upgrade your skills uh, thank you for your time all of you and uh, we must take a leave thank you thank you thank you thank you sir